Welcome to Scorched Earth and a general reading for the sign of Sagittarius, Sun, Moon or Ascendant for the month of March 2023. I hope you will. We're using the Night Sun Tarot for you today. A little bit of housekeeping before we begin. If the reading resonates with you and you would like to go a little bit deeper, there is uh, an extended that you can access at the end. That is the first link in the description box. The second, second, <coughs> second link in the description box is to the six month overviews that I did for each of the signs. They run from January to June 2023 and obviously we are a little way through that period now so I have reduced them accordingly. So if you are interested in finding out what that time frame has in store for you, please do feel free to check out the link. And the third link is to my private community, the Order of the Phoenix over on Circle. Um, you can get access to all of the extended um, content that I create at no extra cost. Um, <clears throat> and also meet a ton of really awesome people. So if that sounds like your bag, you know what to do. But with all of that said, Let's get on and see what's going on with you. Can I have three cards for Sagittarius, please? Whoa. So we have <clears throat> the Temperance card in your recent past. That's your energy, Sagittarius, right there. What about current energy for Sagittarius, please? We have the Five of Swords. And what about what's coming towards Sagittarius? We have the Nine of Swords. We have the Three of Wands at the bottom of the deck here. And I do feel like there's... Mm. Mm. Something's blowing in on the wind here, Sagittarius, right? There's <clears throat> there's an aspect of, of plans that need to be changed. And there's also an aspect of things that things that aren't quite working out the way that they should be. Five of Cups at the bottom of the deck, but something that turns out to be rather a blessing in disguise. And I say that not only because the Three of Wands is at the bottom of the deck, but also because the cards that sit beyond that are the High Priestess and the King of Pentacles there. Now, the King of Pentacles is the King of, you know, delayed gratification, making plans into the future, that sort of thing. But this High Priestess is an interesting intervention between the action as it happens with the Three of Wands and the plans. This is a month to really pay attention to what you're feeling to the degree that if you can, you know, you really tune into that and see what your intuition is telling you. You know, it might start off with a funny feeling that you have about X, Y and Z. Or it might be something really, really direct. It might be a dream. I, the, the, the message is to pay attention to it, whatever it is. So let's get some, let's flip this around so I can uh, bitch about the positioning of the camera and all that kind of thing. <clears throat> and also so that you can see what's going on. Let's get some clarifiers here, please. We've got the Judgment card, interesting, Aries and Scorpio underneath there. Come out this Temperance card, please, and the Chariot. Mm -hmm. Tell me about the Five of Swords. We have the Ten of Swords and two cards, and they are the Four of Wands and the Ace of Wands. Right, I can feel the desperation starting to kick in now. Okay, right. Pin it for a second, Sag. We're coming back to it, I promise. Tell me about the Nine of Swords, please. About the Nine of Swords. The Fool. Yeah, man. Love it. <sighs> and the Queen of Pentacles. And the card at the bottom of the deck is the Temperance card in the upright. We're almost coming full circle with this energy now. Sorry about the, the light. You're not able to see the thing. <clears throat> So we start off with that temperance card and like I said that is Sagittarius so we've got a very authentic stamp of Sagittarian energy on the reading right now. Um, you're showing up in as your authentic self but the, the temperance card also talks about other things. It talks about healing, it talks about balance and moderation and there's a certain aspect of um, of it that seems to be talking about patience to me. Like, I think that you have been extraordinarily patient about something, and it's something to do with your future. It's something to do with what you're working on. And we've got the judgment card and the chariot here. And it's like, although what you want to do more than anything else is go screaming off at a million miles an hour, you understand the value of patience. You have understood the value of patience in the situation that you're in. Because in one way or another, Sagittarius, you are on a road to changing your life. 
And the thing is, this is very conscious. You know that this is what is happening here. You know, when we talk about the, the judgment card, or when we see the judgment card, you know, often we're talking about big life-changing decisions. And those decisions have already been made by you and a plan has already been created. And like I said, you want to go screaming off at a million miles an hour to, to get that underway. And yet still, there is this Mm, this holding back, I must be patient about this, I can't force it, I can't, I, I can't make it go any faster than it's supposed to. Because, because what the temperance card also talks about is divine timing. You know, there's a certain, there's a certain amount of providence here, there's a certain amount of, um, there are things that are up in the air, and they're not going to come in contact with ground until they're ready. So, patience and waiting and getting everything in order getting everything aligned and we see this idea of alignment and balance with both the chariot and the temperance cards there and we sit with that because like i said the decision has already been made and it was made a long time ago and what we've got how going on here is is the arrow that you let fly a while ago looking to find its target and it's not there yet it's still flying through the air well you can sit there and you can will it to go faster but is it actually going to make a difference to the amount of time that it takes for this arrow to hit what it is that you're after probably not and even once the arrow hits you know there may be a slightly meandering path that you take to getting there it's it's not going to be a straightforward a to b no matter how much we would like it to be so but that's cool because for sagittarius i think part of the 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 joy is the journey. It isn't just about the end destination. And I feel like that is something that Sagittarius understand more innately than any other sign in the zodiac. Well, when we come into your current energy, we've got the Five of Swords, the Ten of Swords, the Four of Wands, and the Ace of Wands here. You know, we have this idea of a new life that presumably is, is related to this one over here, right? The, the, the desire to create a new foundation, the desire to start again in some way or another. But it's preceded by this Ten of Swords and this Five of Swords, which are both in and of themselves, in their own right, very challenging cards anyway. To see them showing up together, and particularly to see them making contact with your dream, with your vision, with your desire to start anew, you know, that which you are feeling passionate about at this time, suggests not only a great deal of <clears throat> impatience like maybe you've been waiting for long enough now and it's like now even for me this is starting to get a little bit much <clears throat> but also this sense of second guessing and that's the word that i want to use this doubt is starting to creep in not in the veracity of the thing that you fired the arrow at but perhaps whether it's going to happen when you need it to happen. You know, this, the period that we're in here, March, it, 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 it's the starting point of some considerable change. And this isn't just on the macro, uh, on the micro level, on a personal level, it is also on the macro level. It says that things are happening that are considerably out of our control. And whilst you're Whilst your priority is sorting out you and yours and getting yourself where you need to be and aligning yourself with the people that you need to align yourself with, right? You've done all of the groundwork. <clears throat> it's just not happening quick enough for your liking. And this, this self-doubt here, which is something akin to self-sabotage, that's starting to kick in there because it is to do with the way that you think. And it is about the interruption of the flow of energy you know, these swords are sticking right out of the, uh, what's that called? I've forgotten. Your neck, your vertebrae. There you go, vertebrae. It's sticking right out of there. Like the steel is not supposed to be in there and it's, it's interrupting the flow of something. Like this Ten of Swords doesn't feel like it's something that's happened. It feels like it's a fear of something happening. It's a fear of something coming to an end or something completing before you have had an opportunity to reach for these things. Now that could be a house move. It could literally be a, a, a change of environment in that sort of uh, in that sort of way. 
because the chariot talks about movement and the, the four of wands is the home it isn't just the foundation that we seek to build it is it is our home it is our place of safety and that's something that seems to be having a revision here but it could be uh, it could be to do with jobs it could to be to do with um, with all sorts of things but the fear that it might all come crashing down before you've had a chance to establish the new right to really employ the energy of the ace of wands is actually making my chest feel kind of constricted as I'm talking here I can feel it starting to tighten up now tell me about this ten of swords please. wow <clears throat> I've got the eight of cups and the nine of pentacles I mean maybe the issue here is one of resources or well, certainly whatever it is you've got the hanged man appearing at the bottom of the deck here in the reverse it's like the time for being static is been has been and gone. Now it's about movement. Ultimately, this is what you want. You want the movement. But let's not forget when the hanged man appears, he's talking about the acquisition of wisdom, right? We put ourselves in an uncomfortable place. Like you know everything that you need to know. So the question is, why is there the delay? Why is there the hold up? And I feel like this is a more useful question for you to ask yourself than second guessing or even worrying about it, right? Ah, oh, shit, I'm worrying about it. Uh, what if it doesn't turn out like this? It's more about what's the bigger picture here? What is going on? Is there something that is causing somewhat of a uh, uh, an obstacle to progress? Or is it that the pieces are still trying to get into the right place in the puzzle? Because this Nine of Pentacles talks about resource management. And it could well be that what it is that you want to pull off at this time, you don't yet have the resources for. It's like you've got to be a patient for a little bit longer. You've got to work a little bit harder. You've got to keep this self-doubt and this self-sabotage and all that sort of thing under wraps just a little while longer to get you to the truest state of this that you can have. Because it could be that if the movement happened now, Serge, what you would end up with would be more like the, the, the Ten of Swords. It's like, well, you jumped before it was ready and now you've missed the boat. Or maybe you just you caught hold of it with one finger, but now it's made everything much, much harder. Instead of waiting for, it, for, for the boat to align with you and then doing a little hop into it, it's like you've made it a bigger problem than it needed to be. And I think, I think part of the frustration is the fact that in some way you have recognised the situation that you are in right now as being represented by the eight of cups it's like all emotional investment in where you are right now has been cut off it is gone you're ready for the new thing you're ready for the next thing but the interesting thing for me about this is that there's a I reminded of something my um I was, I was gonna say it was actually my first husband but also my partner says it now as well um Mm. yeah you know measure twice cut once and if we do that with something as as you know it's not meaningless but you know if we do it with things that aren't quite as important like laying carpet or you know d d doing whatever it is then surely we should take that same approach to the things that are vitally important to us where we are, what we're doing, who we're doing it with, you know, it's, there's something about time being really important here, allowing things to play out the way that they are supposed to, what's that line from the desiderata, you know, no doubt the universe is unfolding as it should, I don't actually think that there are any obstacles here for you at all, per se, Sagittarius, I think what the issue is, is that everything's moved a little slower than you have now the good news if I can bring the good news is that everything speeds up from here <clears throat> not just for you but for everyone when I did the six month overviews what was very very clear was everyone was on an incredibly steep learning curve that starts in March when when everything else around us starts to speed up you know the skies are very very busy with astrological transits at the moment if you're not aware we've got Pluto moving into Aquarius and we've got Saturn moving into Pisces 
there are a couple of other things as well that that escape me at the moment but there is a sense that everything everything is about to get a little bit intense a little bit surreal and a little bit you know well your happy place really actually i guess sagittarius so whatever the whatever the restrictions are currently and i don't feel like they're obstacles i don't feel like the restrictions i just feel like everything else has been moving a little slower than you have you're going to come into into time with this i forgot the word i was looking for right right you know when you see things and they're kind of off kilter like that and then all of a sudden there's that magic moment where they just suddenly synchronize the synchronicity is what is going to to be kicking in this month but it's really really important that you don't sabotage it by suddenly taking all of that good energy that you had towards the the potential for restarting your life in some way or another and and you know stick a stick a great big tree branch into the wheel because your thoughts are powerful i was talking to leo um <clears throat> in this month's reading about about reality and, and just how malleable it is and how influential we are over it. And I would say exactly the same message to you, almost doubly so, actually, because you have that wandering spirit, right? It is about the new things. But it's funny I should mention Leo, actually, because I feel like what is the combination going on here is, right, the, the Sagittarians desire for expansion and to explore and experience new things but also with more of the leo's kind of fixed energy at the background and going actually let's just wait for a little bit longer because we're waiting for things to 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 synchronize we're waiting for it to be at that point <coughs> doesn't mean leo's any more patient than you probably worse i would think but they are fixed and that's important because it's about making sure that the baseline that you're jumping off is as strong as possible, right? Bear with me a second, I'm just gonna pause the video because I've just noticed my laptop's about to go flat. Thank you for your patience, Sagittarius, it is much appreciated. Um, yeah, what I was saying was, it's making sure that, that the baseline that you're jumping from, the foundation that you're jumping from, has all of the I's dotted and the T's crossed. And also just allowing all the places to all the pieces to fall into place because like i said you run the risk of making things a damn sight harder for yourself if you try and do it now you'll know when it's time that's what these cards say down here actually i feel like what i was talking about right at the beginning about the potential for the change of plans isn't actually isn't that I feel like what you might be worrying about is the need to change your plan. Not having enough faith in the fact that what you want is on its way to you, it's just taking a little time. Because like I said, I don't actually sense any obstacles, I don't actually sense anything standing in your way. And I certainly don't get any sense that what you want is not available to you. Because I mean, look at these cards that we've got here for March. We've got the Nine of Swords. Now, you cannot see it because the fucking... Right, let me do this. <clears throat> you can see the cards a little bit better. Right, so we have this Nine of Swords here. There it is. Um, there we go. So what we have is is as you would expect, nine swords, and they are all plunged into the ground. We've got something that looks very blood-like seeping out of the, uh, the gashes that the swords have caused in the ground. But of the whole card, it, it's almost like the nine swords become something close to inconsequential. Because what really draws the eye more than anything else is how, how this plant is taking over and it has worked its way up towards the light. I think with this Nine of Swords, there is a sense that hope springs eternal. And even when things feel like they are really challenging, if you can maintain your perspective, there is always a possibility that things can just, just turn out exactly as you want them. You know, exactly as you want them. They can turn out well, even if it doesn't move at the speed to which you, you are accustomed. Because we've got the Queen of Pentacles and the Fool here. I mean, look at that. If you you want 
confirmation that your new start is on its way. The Ace of Wands and the Fool is that. Hands down every time. Like you are going to start your new cycle. You will get to start again. You will be able to wander and you will be free of baggage when you do it. But the Queen of Pentacles is actually probably quite an interesting addendum to this, which is look at what you've learned in the interim here. You know, I, I truly believe that faith and self-belief are two things that people find it really easy to rock when everything is going well. But the thing about those those two things <laughs> is that <clears throat> the point where you actually need them is where things do not appear to be going well right that's when it actually gets tested and in some ways it feels to me a little bit like your faith is being tested it's like how long can you hold out for what you actually really want when it appears like it's not on its way over the horizon you know we talk about Sagittarius sometimes in terms of the Knight of Wands right and there is there is impatience indicated by that there is uh, <clears throat> well, all manner of fuckery right you know thoughtlessness recklessness all that sort of stuff right definitely impatient though it's like is this fun uh no right I'm gonna go and do something else instead it's a very non-committed energy but then think about the card that you've had underneath here the king of pentacles it is the absolute opposite it's the polar opposite of knight of wands energy because this is about delayed gratification whereas you know the knight of wands is about the here and now it's a question of not just understanding the value but assigning Assigning how much of yourself, uh, understanding how much of yourself you will assign to make something happen that is important to you. Now, if we use the example of Taurus, right, because the king of pentacles is Taurus, it's fixed earth, it's very slow moving, doesn't like change or that sort of thing. A lesson that would be really difficult for Taurus would be an amazing opportunity appearing right in front of them that requires an answer very swiftly. Maybe it might require them uprooting themselves in some sort of way, right? Throwing themselves into the unknown. Now, were that to be presented to a Sagittarius, you'd be all over that shit. Tauruses, a little less so. A lot less so. They probably have a panic attack, right? Just like, no, I can't do this. <clears throat> They'd be more likely to say no because of the speed that was required. Now, they might miss out on something really quite um, incredible and quite life-changing even if it was something that they wanted because of the speed at which it was, you know, required an answer. Conversely, in the same situation, the way that is going to test Sagittarius is not something happening fast, it's something happening slow. How long are you willing to wait for the thing? How patient are you willing to be? How much control can you exercise can you exercise over your internal space to allow all of the pieces to fall into place? Tell me about this King of Pentacles, please. Six of Swords. <clears throat> the Six of Swords, the Sun and the Fool. With the Queen of Pentacles again at the bottom of the deck. I mean this is Capricorn energy. <clears throat> right here and you might be dealing with a Capricorn you might be dealing with an Aries a Leo Aries again you know that's possible but I feel like this is all your energy here and it's all your intent and it is that arrow that you 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 let fly a little while ago we know that there is a cost to everything and when it comes to you know big life lessons that we live through Sometimes the easiest ones to get over are the ones that are the, you know, sudden shocking events. And you're like, holy shit, you know, people rally round and, and then they look after you in that sort of situation. Right? They help you get back on your feet. But the ones that really test you on a character level are the ones that take the time to play out. 
They're the ones that take an aspect of your character and go, how much do you want it? How much do you want it? Saj, do you want it this much? Do you want it this much? This, this much? You know? Or is your impatience going to sabotage the situation? The Six of Swords is an indication that what is being left behind is not actually what you're leaving behind here, but it's leaving behind a particular aspect of your mindset. And I use that word faith right at the beginning, and I feel like that, that word is really, really important. Because you have to have faith, Sagittarius. So Sagittarians are creatures of faith. And at the point where there is no evidence for you to believe a thing, that's where you have to believe it the hardest. So if what you're trying to pull off isn't showing up yet, that's the time when you start leaning on that faith. It's the time where you start constructing it even more. You know, what this is leaving behind here is the impatience. What it's leaving behind is the self-doubt. What it's leaving behind is the self-sabotaging behaviour. You know? There's incredible growth here in this, but there's a certain amount of submission that needs to occur. I, just, I was talking to somebody last night and I described, I, I was actually talking about faith. And I was saying, you know, faith as a Leo for me feels like a very different thing to the way that I notice that my my daughter carries it and my, my partner carries it. They're both Sagittarians. For me, the belief has to be in my ability to be able to do a thing. That's it, right? As, as long as I can believe in myself that I can do it, I know that I can do it and it's fine. <clears throat> it's with Sagittarius it seems to be more like a kind of cloak that you can put around your shoulders it, it's somehow it feeds you now the person that I was talking to was actually an Aquarius and we were, we were talking about what faith would look like to an Aquarius and I said like it feels very different to me to how I perceive it in Sagittarians and, and in other people too you know Again, you know, Pisces would wear it very differently to say a Capricorn, something like that. This is a point where you need to demonstrate stamina. And faith, for sure. But the stamina comes from the faith. I read something this morning, I don't know, I'd been on Twitter or Instagram or something like that, and it just said, it's easy to start, it's hard to continue, and it's almost impossible to finish. And what is it, I think, that separates the people that make it past the start line, but give up halfway through, to the ones that actually make it to the end? Determination, almost certainly. But faith in the fact that what you are doing, what you are experiencing, what you are engaging in is important. That's what it is there. That's how it becomes nourishing for you. This is, this is the thing that is lighting the way for you. There are no obstacles. It's not even like your being as an obstacle here. It feels like a lesson that it is uh, convenient to teach you at this point while all of the pieces are falling into place. And that is, how much do you want it? How far are you prepared to go to get the thing that you want? The thing that drives you, the thing that inspires you and makes you feel passionate. Because it's likely that you haven't put a time limit on it. But as time is going by, you're starting to feel yourself twitch. When we're talking about internal mastery, and I feel like we are, it's recognising that twitch and subduing it, telling it that the reason that we're waiting so long is because this is worth it, this is what we want. We have to let it play out in the way that it's supposed to. I have no worries about this at all, Sagittarius. And I'm going to go over to Vimeo now because I feel like we might get some idea of the movement over there like when we can expect it to occur what it's going to look like is it going to start slow or is it going to be a like whew, it, now we need to turn around quick you know I, 
we're going to be looking at that specifically in the extended so if you're interested in that it's the first link in the description box if not <clears throat> just breathe just patience that's the only thing that you need at the moment and if you can allow that patience to turn into faith because you really truly believe oh so here's the thing right i just <clears throat> But I had a friend once who, who asked me to define belief and I came up with a couple of different things and, and they're all bollocks, frankly. And he had a definition which was belief is an idea plus emotion. That really stuck with me. And I tried pulling it apart and I can't. It's a really, really good definition. Your belief, Sagittarius, needs to be in an idea. And the idea can be anything. The idea can be you being in a different place, you living, living a different life, you being inspired and creative and all those kind of things. Certainly creating a new foundation for yourself, which is what this needs to be talking about. But it's got to have the emotion behind it too. You can't allow any kind of interruption in the flow of that emotion. It's got to be tended to. It's got to be nurtured. That's what's going on here for you this month. I'm not worried about it in the slightest. But like I said, we will have a look into it. We'll dig into it in the extended. So I shall leave it there. Know that I love you all very, very much. Very much. And I'll see you soon.